Welcome to Second Recapped. Musher Leonard Sapala drives his team of sled dogs and shouts commands to his lead dog Togo. They pass the potential distraction of the caribou herd. Togo gives them a cursory glance as he runs by. When they continue without incident Sapala quietly says, Good dog. He praises the team, saying well done all. There'll be full bellies and warm beds tonight. As they arrive back in Nome, Dan Murphy approaches Sapala. Dan tells him that there has been an outbreak of diphtheria which has lasted more than a week. Sapala continues on to join the town officials' meeting. Dr. Curtis Welch informs the community of the highly contagious epidemic and its repercussions. Mayor George Maynard suggests that the antitoxin be flown to them. Sapala tells the group that the impending storm will be severe and the rapidly dropping barometer is of concern. He elaborates, saying that Togo had ignored the caribou herd earlier and kept running. Togo is renowned for chasing caribou and has never, in 12 years, run directly past them. When an animal denies his nature and runs for the barn because he fears the storm, man better fear the storm. Jeff at Lindeberg, co-founder of Gnome, states that the open cockpit airplane with water-cooled engines is not an option in these severe weather conditions. Dr. Welch joins Sapala and Togo after the meeting and asks for a ride to the hospital. On their arrival, Sapala looks through the hospital windows at the desperately ill children. He returns home, deep in thought, as he waxes his sled runners. Constance asks if he will undertake the dangerous journey to collect the antitoxins. When he replies that he should, she says she is afraid that he will run Togo to his death. Later, Constance appeals to him to take Fritz's lead dog instead, as Togo is 12 years old. He explains that he is unlikely to survive the round trip to Nanana and back without Togo. The mayor arrives, confirming that air delivery is impossible due to the severity of the storm. Sapala sits with Togo in front of the fire and asks if he has one more race in him. Constance hides her concerns as she says goodbye to Sapala the following morning. She kneels in front of Togo, asking him to bring both Sapala and himself back home to her safely. The community line the street in support as the team leave on their harrowing race of mercy. Togo leads as Sapala assesses the skies, saying here it comes. They run directly into the storm. In a flashback to twelve years earlier, Constance tenderly watches over the sickly newborn pup. She asks Sapala what it costs him to give this life a chance. When he asks what this pup brings to the breed. What does he bring to the breed if he survives? The heart of a survivor. Togo grows stronger and runs around mischievously, annoying Sapala, who regards him as a canine delinquent. He decides to give Togo away. Constance watches sadly as Victor Anderson arrives to collect him. Later, Victor returns Togo to them, saying he's more trouble than he's worth. Back in the present, the sled dogs run down the mountainside through the snowstorm. Togo comes to a halt as his exceptional ability to sense danger prevents them all from hurtling straight down a sheer drop. Although Sapala tries to break and jumps off the sled it continues down the slope, you hold on, dragging him behind it. They stop a split second before plummeting over the edge. He commands Togo to pull, which he does, and manages to turn the team around. The dogs finally drag the sled back up the steep mountainside. Sapala shouts good dogs all. The exhausted team arrive and meet Amatuk at the roadhouse where they rest overnight. In a flashback to 12 years earlier, Togo watches intently as Sapala reinforces the kennels. He tells Togo that he is difficult and untrainable and that Constance has been too soft-hearted with him. The dogs bark and howl in anticipation as Sapala collects the sled for their training run. As they leave, Togo searches for a way to escape. He digs repeatedly and unsuccessfully along the fence line as the other pups watch. Finally finding a way unimpeded by stone he emerges triumphantly on the other side of the fence. Togo runs with purpose, determined to join the team. He finally sees them, barking and behaving disruptively as they come to a halt. His attention is drawn to the caribou herd close by. Sapala says oh no, easy now, and tells him to leave it. Togo disobeys and runs towards them with the team in pursuit. The herd runs to the river as he chases them. When the sled overturns on the rough terrain, Sapala is thrown into the icy water. He emerges and stares at this indomitable disobedient pup who is so happy to be with him. Back at home, Sapala angrily tells Constance that her dog violates the rules of the pack and upsets the hierarchy he has taken years to establish. He removes Togo from the kennels and locks him in the tack room. Togo assesses his new surroundings. He looks upwards and plots his escape. After negotiating his way through a cupboard he proceeds on his way towards the roof. Constance is alerted by the sound of breaking glass as Togo continues on his quest to escape. He emerges onto the roof before jumping down onto the hay wagon and then runs to join the team. 
Back at the roadhouse, Sapala informs Amatuk that he intends to take the dangerous shortcut across Norton Sound which is still frozen, which will save him a day's travel. He reassures him that they will make it as he has done it before. Sapala gives the sled dogs the command to begin the perilous journey over the ice. Togo leads bravely as they race over the treacherous fractured ice scape. Sapala shouts encouragement telling each tenacious dog, by name, that they will be remembered for their bravery. He calls them a band of champions as he urges them to run as they navigate through the ice as it cracks around them. Back in Nome, Mayor Maynard types a brief press release which he hands to his assistant Max for the Associated Press. His article is front-page news throughout the country. The severe weather conditions of almost 60 below zero, with winds topping 50 miles an hour, on this heroic race of 640 miles, captures the attention of Mew Still Stand, the nation. Sapala and the exhausted dogs arrive at the next roadhouse to rest overnight. He ruefully tells Tullimac that he tried to give Togo away and recalls the incident. In the flashback, Sapala travels with Constance to rehome Togo. He says that she sees the pup as spirited and lovable. All he sees as a breeder is trouble, a waste of time and failure. As they leave him behind with his new owner, Togo immediately looks for a way to escape. He sees a large windowpane and jumps through it. Sapala is on a training run with the team and halts as he hears him barking. Togo runs to join them and after disrupting the team, he sits at the front in the lead dog position. Sapala removes him and places him in the last row next to Elsa. When she growls and snarls at him he is unafraid and licks her face. Sapala switches the dog's positions a few times as they continue on their way home. Constance smiles proudly as she watches them return home with Togo as lead dog. Sapala is overjoyed, telling her that Togo is a lead dog and not a sled dog. He admits she was right, agreeing that he does have the heart of a survivor. He finally names him Togo after only calling him Pup until then. Back in Nome, in present time, Mayor Maynard and Lindeberg inform Constance that the governor has arranged relay teams to collect the antitoxin. The following morning Sapala continues on his journey, unaware of the new arrangements made after he had already left. He passes by Henry Ivanov who is part of the relay team, without stopping. Henry's dogs alert him and he runs after Sapala shouting that he has the serum. Sapala returns on foot just as he gives up hope. While they shelter overnight, Henry tells him of the hardships the less experienced teams have faced so far in each of their 31-mile legs of the relay. Sapala leaves with the serum the following morning after thanking Henry for his friendship and hospitality. They prepare to take the high-risk attempt to cross Norton Sound on the return trip to Nome. As Togo leads the team across the rapidly cracking ice, Sapala shouts praise and encouragement. In a flashback to ten years earlier, the team race in the All-Alaska sweepstakes. They race past Scotty Allen who is considered the greatest musher of all time. Sapala smiles as they cross the finish line first, against all odds, winning 5,000 pounds. Constance kneels proudly before Togo saying good boy, while the crowd cheers. As they continue on the perilous return journey to Nome, Togo stops at the edge of an ice floe. Sapala checks his compass and commands the dogs to bear left. They slip as they run over the melting ice and the resultant flows move rapidly and unevenly. Sapala shouts encouragement as they finally approach the other side. The team comes to a halt as the ice flow moves further away creating a rapidly increasing gap between them and the land. He hammers a stake into the ice to secure the sled and releases Togo from the harness. After asking Togo to forgive him, he throws him forward over the water onto the snow-covered bank. He releases the rope as Togo strains to pull the ice flow closer to land. The dogs run forward as Sapala pushes the sled behind them. The team jumps to safety as Sapala slips and loses his grip. He runs and jumps across, landing on the snow bank. Togo walks to greet him. When they stop for the night Amatuk assists with the serum, as Togo rests. Back in Nome, Constance meets with Gunnar Kazan who is preparing to leave to collect the serum. She suggests using Fox and Balto as the lead dogs and goes to harness the dogs for the journey. Before he leaves, Amatuk points out that all the ice has melted on Norton Sound, saying Mule Lake of Memories, that Sapala cheated death on the crossing the day before. On the journey back, Sapala asks Togo to get them all back to Joe Dexter's roadhouse as he cannot see ahead through the thick snowstorm. He wakes slumped over his sled. Togo lies totally still after using his exceptional ability to find the trail through the brutal storm. Sapala tells him that if he stops he will die, not realizing that Togo has led them to the roadhouse before he collapses. Joe Dexter and Charlie Olson come to meet them and collect the serum from the sled. After telling Togo he is magnificent, Sapala carries him gently inside. Charlie carefully packs the serum and leaves on the penultimate leg of the relay. 
he delivers the serum to Gunnar Kazan, whose sled dogs then navigate their way through the terrible storm to Nome. When Gunnar arrives he hands the serum to Dr. Welch who runs out to meet him. As he pats his dogs, a reporter asks his name and those of the lead dogs. They take a photograph of Balto, calling him the champion savior of Nome. At the hospital Dr. Welch smiles as the children recover. Sapala thanks Joe Dexter for his kindness to them all as they recuperated. He walks home at the front of his brave team next to Togo. On their return, Constance quietly joins Sapala as they watch over Togo who lies recovering on their bed. The following morning the mayor and the community visit, bringing gifts of gratitude and celebrating Togo's success. Despite his injured paw, Togo refuses to remain housebound and escapes the house, running to join the team. Sapala has a brief memory of the pup running joyously towards him as Togo runs into his open arms. Constance stands quietly in the distance watching their incredible bond. He says that he always thought that Togo lived for the sled, when all along what he lived for was Sapala. They discover that a walk together was as good as a run. Togo lived out his golden years with a new job as a father and sired pups for two years. While Balto was celebrated as the hero of the Mercy Run, mushers from all over the world jostled to get one of Togo's pups, known as Sapala's Siberians. They were a breed valued for their intelligence, stamina and courage, but most of all for their good nature and uncommon bond with humans. Togo left them on a Thursday in December. Sapala continued to work with dogs after Togo's death, saying, And if you're lucky enough to have known a great one, they never really leave. They stay with you as long as you live, harnessed to your heart, giving their all. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.